find our sheets and our guests would find seats in the gallery. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. O'Gala? Yes. Summers? Yes. Singer? Here. Moran? Present. Rice? Here. Harris? Here. Trainier? Here. Benefield? Here. Fritz? Present. Gould? Here. Militello? Here. Balich? Here. Rizalone? Here. Winfrey? Here. Parker? Here. Stanley Ferry? Here. Dollinger? Here. Markham? Here. Hart? Hart? Tuminello? Here. Weigel? Here. Ferry? Here. Politis? Here. And Eustace? Here. Thank you. 26 present. 26 uh, present, and we have quorum present. Entertain a motion to place on file a certificate of publication. Moved by Ms. Winfrey, second by Ms. Summers. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. O'Gallo? Yes. Summers? Yes. Singer? Yes. Moran? Present. Rice. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Rice, Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Gould? Yes. Militello? Yes. Balich? Yes. Bizalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Perry? Yes. Dollinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Yes. Tuminello? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Barry? Yes. Perlitis? Yes. And Eustace? Yes. Thank you. 26 for a good the motion is carried. Next up, uh, looking for a motion to approve the Bull County Board recess meeting of uh, January 18, 2018, the approval of the minutes. Moved by Mr. Ferry, second by Mr. Markham. Any discussion? Any discussion? Previous roll by Mr. Tuminello, second by Mr. Gould. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And jury motion is carried. Madam Clerk, would you acknowledge our elected officials and Madam, our medium, uh, media that is here present? Sure. County Clerk Nancy Schultz Booth, our County Executive Larry Walsh, Recorder of Deeds Karen Stuckel, our Sheriff Mike Kelly, State's Attorney James Blasco, and we also have Dan Vera, the Jolly Township Supervisor. Grace Slattery, Rosie Burton, Archie Gavin, and Brian Hertzman from Joliet Township. Welcome. Good morning. Um, media, we have Farmers Weekly Review, Nick Ryer, and from Southtown, Susan. <coughs> oh, Scott Stolkin? <coughs> Scott's somewhere around here. Oh, there he is. Yeah. WJOL. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have a quick check presentation. 
I can plant township to the safe passage program if uh, Annette uh, Parker and County Board Member Denise Winfrey uh, come to the podium and introduce Dr. Burke and the Joliet Township representatives. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Executive. We have with us this morning the Joliet Township Board, our Township Supervisor Dan Vera, Township Trustees Rosie Burden, Pete Gavin, Grace Slattery, Brian Hertzman, our Township Collector Denise Winfrey, and our Township Attorney Franklin Burke. And they are here with the presentation. I want to thank Julia Township for the presentation of the check for $150,000 towards our Safe Passage program. Um, it's going to help with our opiate crisis that's going on here in Will County and with the uh, treatment information for the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to come back. 
uh, to where I got my start many years ago here at the county board level, in here, uh, now at the township level. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we uh, had Dr. Burke come over and spoke to us, uh, met with me and told me about the programs that, that she was working on, talking to the county executive as well. And uh, I do appreciate it, uh, the board. Thank you for the support. The whole board is here today and our township attorney. The idea started with our township attorney, Frank Berkey, who was aware of the program and told us to pursue it. And we did. And I thank the two people behind me. And it um, worked out really well. So on behalf of Joliet Township and our town board and our township attorney, I see you, Franklin. Uh, we appreciate very much and glad to partner with the county on this effort. Thank you very much.
uh, 21. So it is very timely that you would invite me down here to talk about uh, Route 80. Uh, I know that uh, we, we are familiar with Route 80. We are familiar with the problems uh, on Route 80. We understand that there are safety concerns, and we understand that there are tremendous opportunities. One of the things that the governor has asked us to do is to use the tollway system to create economic opportunity and to create jobs. And that is one of the things that we take very seriously. And we know with the development that's taking place in Will County and even south of Will County, that we need to invest in our infrastructure to make sure that we can maximize the opportunities that we have for economic development and job creation. So I appreciate the leadership that all of you are taking and looking at ways to improve Route 80, not only from a safety point of view, but from an economic development point of view. And I want you to know that we are interested in working with you. CMAP, as we speak, is uh, working on a plan that takes a look at all of our interstates in northeastern Illinois and, and talks about how they can be improved. As you know, not only Route 80, but other roads uh, in the interstate system need to be rebuilt. They need congestion relief. They need safety uh, issues to be addressed. And CMAP has recognized that uh, and is looking at it. And when you look at what's going on in government these days, the old days of finding a revenue stream, issuing bonds, and fixing a road or rebuilding a road or adding capacity to it are, are, are just not feasible anymore. And when you look at the President's infrastructure plan, uh, I, I don't think that we can go to Washington anymore and ask for federal dollars. It just doesn't seem that there's going to be an opportunity to go to, down to Springfield or go to Washington and seek dollars. We're going to have to figure out ways to do it ourselves Locally, and certainly, I believe that the tollway is one of those options. So, thank you for inviting me down here. I want you to know that we are very interested in continuing to have discussions with you to try and solve this problem that you have well defined. Uh, we are open to being creative. Uh, we have no options that are off the table. And as I said, I think the time is, is very good. So. I look forward to seeing you in the future. I, I look forward to working with all of you, and uh, I think uh, I think we can solve the problem. So, if, <laughs> if we desire, I can answer your question. Time for questions. I, I, I'm Any questions, question, Mr. Ministers? Mr. Sutro, thank you for coming down. And of course, we talk on occasion. Uh, and uh, uh, so, I have really two kind of quick questions. Uh, one is, is, you know, this board passed a resolution requesting of the tollway authority to look perhaps to a feasibility study or kind of let us know what's, what's maybe possible or how the tollway can help us here in Will County. And I, I know you're looking into that. I don't really want to comment on that, but I know you're, you, you received the resolution and you're uh, considering that, I assume. That, that, that is correct. Uh, we did receive that resolution. And as I said, we're looking at, at putting together a new, a new program, and Route 80 is one of the roads that we are definitely looking at. We do believe that from a financial point of view, it would make sense for the tollway to do it. And we think uh, with electronics the way that they are now, uh, the old days of having to wait in line uh, to pay your tolls are done. Our users are, are very happy with the tollway. I, I think that uh, it is certainly a very viable option for, for rebuilding and adding capacity and making Route 80 a, a safer road. So uh, thank you for sending us that resolution. Thank you for sending us that resolution. And we are looking at that. And as I said, the time is right because we're, we're, looking, we're looking for projects. Our, our existing system, once we complete the Move Illinois program, will be essentially rebuilt and capacity will be added to it. And we will at that, at that time have the opportunity, I think, to start looking at, at some, uh, some roads that are interstates. And if, if the numbers work, and I believe the numbers would work, and I believe that the law is such now that we would be able to toll Route 80. And what we just need to, de need to know and determine now, and I think we have to work on this together, is is, is, there, is there a desire from the constituents that you represent and that people who will be affected by this have the desire to have this road be a tollway? And if it is, 
we, we stand ready to, uh, to, work, to work with people and make it a reality. Now the other question I would have, and maybe a little early for you to answer this question, uh, uh, but uh, we've seen a transportation bill being proposed by the president, and of course, in that uh, uh, program, leveraging local resources seems to be a, a cornerstone of that. And for the first time, I believe, they actually talked about tolling and toll authorities. Uh, uh, and I'm hoping that creates some additional opportunities uh, for the uh, uh, my toll authority. Uh, have you had time to really look at that? I, I, I think it's probably a little premature. You don't know what's going to happen forward. But I, I'm thinking that could also help accelerate if, if we can get federal money. Uh, it helps us leverage out their money and, and resources. Here. <coughs> we have we have looked at the, uh, the president's proposal. We have met with uh, uh, people in the administration, and my belief is that they they are going to be supportive of tolling. And when you look at the other options, probably tolling is is the best option to be able to to put more roads or to add capacity. They they, they talk about new revenue sources. And there aren't too many ways to come up with new revenue sources unless you can devise a way for the user to pay, which we think is the fairest way to do. So obviously uh, we are watching uh, watching carefully what the federal government uh, does, what kind of a bill that they pass. I would just come back and say though that the tollway, we, we, we do not have any federal funds, we do not have any state funds, we are a user-funded organization, and our, our funding, we, we are a strong financial institution, and I don't think that we would have to look for outside funds to be able to uh, undertake a project on Route 80 or on the other interstates. Thank you. Ms. Uh, I have the experience of driving on, on Interstate 55. Yes. And I can't find a time of day when it is not rush hour. Uh, I have heard lots of conversation about, you know, a express lane in the middle, possibly a toll. Is that really moving forward, or is that kind of at a standstill? Well, the, the, that decision is a little bit above my pay rate. <laughs> well, but I'm telling you, you need to make a decision. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we stand ready. We've been the tollway. We stand ready to take on new projects if we are asked. And um, certainly that is one of the projects that, that has been discussed. And, and, and when you look at Route 80, when you look at 55, when you look at the Eisenhower, when you look at the majority of uh, our interstates, they are in need of investment. They are in need of additional <coughs> capacity. Uh, we recognize that. and. Um, what needs to, and, and we're looking forward to the study from CMAP because I think I think the study is going to recommend that if we are going to move forward on many of these roads, that they are going to have to be told in whole or in part. So we're anxious to see the study. We are anxious to help solve the transportation issues in this region, and um, we're looking we're looking for partners to help us do that. Other questions? Other questions? Jim, did you have a question? Commissioner, to take the turning. Um, interstate, I, I, as a child, I watched the building Interstate 80. Uh, I went through West Park and destroyed my ski belt, so I heard my sled belt. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're at a point now with the tremendous economic growth we've had. The one problem with that is the incredible uh, truck traffic. And there are some interchanges on Interstate 80 which are Russian roulette. You're going south on 55 and you want to go east on 80, you're taking your life in your hands when you come up to the top to merge. Yeah. Um, and the state of Illinois does not have the money to redesign all these interchanges that are a problem. And I just read recently that the bridge over the Displains River, the bridges over the Displains River, are in uh, great need of repair. Um, would your, would the tollway be able to handle those kind of expenses? Uh, and how long would it take for the, you have to have poles for a number of years before you can approach repairing those types of things. Uh, but, but we have a tremendous need here, and, and nobody wants to pay a pole when you get on a, on a road, but 
if it's uh, a life and death situation that you are facing here, uh, hopefully this can be your project uh, that you're searching for. Well, safety is obviously very, very important, and, and one of government's duties is, and nobody knows that better than you, it is, is to provide uh, safety. And we, we at the Tollway, we have never really taken over a, uh, an interstate. We did a, a small piece up on the Elgin and O'Hare, uh, and, and we believe that the law would allow us to do that if the political will was there for it to take place. And we believe that it would financially work. And uh, obviously, it's very early at this point. But uh, from a general planning point of view, I would think what we would do if we were granted authority to go in and take over Route 80, we would we would we would rebuild it. And I believe that we do have the finances to do that. And we generally what we do is we we use some pay-as-you-go money and then we borrow. And we are a very conservative institution financially. We have a very high uh, ratio of coverage. So I, I believe financially we would have the ability to do that. And we would want to fix it and put it back in before we probably toll it. Because I, I, I think if you're going to toll something, you want to give, give people a better product instead of just going in and taking what they have and toll it. So, but, we're a little bit ahead of things with that, but that would be my plan. It would be if, if there is a desire for the tollway to take over Route 80, we would be very interested in working with the powers that be to do that. I believe that we have the financial wherewithal to take it over and to do it right, to make it a safe road, <coughs> and to create uh, future economic opportunity, which creates jobs. So we're but just, I just want to comment on you and your board because my experience on the interstates with my son playing baseball uh, with the tollways, uh, they're safe, they're in great condition, and uh, it'd be wonderful to see I-80 like that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Ms. Bellinger, did you get a question? Oh, no, I yeah. am. Mr. Fritz alone. Mm -hmm. Bob, I, I know you're aware of our community freight friendly mobility study. Did you read the ACEC awards for the one best? Congratulations in class, thank you for that study. So obviously that's something that can help you when you're doing, uh, you look at, at what the uh, feasibility is, but what else can this body do to help you when you're taking a look at your next plan? Well, I, I, I think I, I think helping to put together a coalition. The more people that, the more people, the more entities that are interested in us moving forward, <coughs> Obviously, we need to have support out of the state. Uh, any support we can get from uh, other elected officials, whether they be federal officials or state officials or local officials, I think is, is very, very important. And obviously, we want to support the individuals who are going to use, use the road. The people who get up every day and get in their car and drive to work and want to drive home in a safe fashion. Uh, we want to know that, uh, that there's a consensus that our, our leaders and the individuals who would be the users of this road would like to have a tollway become involved and, uh, and rebuild this road. Okay, Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? <coughs> Dr. Moran. As, you, as you're doing your study to examine what road improvements you would make if you were able to take over Interstate 80 or parts of Interstate 80, um, I hope you're also keeping an open mind about dealing and expressway. I know that the, the governor put the thing on hold when he came into office. Uh, the largest port in North America is, is located in the Elwood, Wilmington, Joliet area. Um, there is uh, fixing Interstate 80 is not going to help the country grow. Four percent of gross national product in the country moves through Will County. Uh, the bottleneck at Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan is still going to exist regardless of what you do with the transportation system along the Interstate 80 corridor through Joliet. Uh, I'm hoping that the Illinois Expressway is something that you're still willing to look at uh, as, you, as you go through your reviews. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, I'm bad, uh, 
CMAP is in um, the uh, overseer of the study. That's and, correct. And uh, do you have um, any kind of a uh, date that they will be <coughs> finished with their work? Uh, do, do they know? And I know that they got a huge, uh, you know, job ahead of them of putting that all the data together. But did, did they indicate uh, a possible? A date that they could put out uh, of the results. We expect to see it this year in 2018. Okay. Uh, they they are well well into the project. They started the project last year, yeah. and uh, so hopefully we're going to see some results. I, I, I would hope uh, by mid year, but if not by mid year, certainly before the end of the year. We 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 like you are anxiously awaiting to see to see what they uh, they come up with. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sherlockstrom, uh, for, for coming down. Mr. Weigel. 
Make a motion to close the public hearing. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Mr. Fraser Long, Madam Clerk, call the world. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. O'Gallo? Yes. Summers? Yes. Singer? Yes. Moran? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Thank you. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Poole? Yes. Militello? Yes. Balich? Yes. Mizzalone? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Ferry? Yes. Dollinger? Yes. Markham? Yes. Hart? Yes. Tuminello? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Barry? Yes. Cronitis? Yes. And Eustace? Yes. Thank you. 26 affirmative. 26 affirmative. The public hearing has been closed. Mr. Weigel. Okay, the first case, uh, ZC 17055, is a map amendment A1 to I2, uh, enjoy a township, uh, it's a vacant property. Uh, they want to build a, an industrial uh, building. Uh, committee recommends approval, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Blago, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. Uh, second case, DC 17057. Uh, this is uh, Wagner of Concrete, uh, located in Lockport Township on the High Road. They're seeking a map in the net from A1I2. Uh, they have an existing business that <coughs> And they want to buy the lot next door to expand it. Uh, can you recommend approval? And I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel. Second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Premier. Second by Ms. Parker. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Can you show me as an abstention? Show me as a no. Thank you. Extension and then no. Thank you. Motion has carried. Next case, ZC 17062 is a special use permit for light equipment sales in New Lenox Township. They're taking over an existing uh, industrial building. Uh, the committee recommends approval, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Ms. Melitello. Any questions? Any Previous questions? Well. Previous vote by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tumanel. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary. Aye. Thank you. Valage. Mr. Valage, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Motion is carried. Our next meeting is March 13th. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Joe. Next up, Finance Committee. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Will Count. First up, we have some uh, financial reports. Here we have a report from the Illinois Department of Revenue showing sales tax remitted to Will County for the month of November 2017 to be $1,688,407.91. RTA tax received is two million six thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy-one cents for a total of three million six hundred ninety-four thousand five hundred ninety-three dollars and sixty-two cents. And we also have the monthly treasury report dated December thirty-first from the Royal County Treasurer Steve Weber. I'd like to make a motion to put both of those reports on file. Moved by Mr. Frizzle, one second by Mr. Ollinger. Any questions? All in favor to signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. 18-43, appropriating the help we deploy Illinois program grant funds in the state's attorney's drug court, fiscal year 2018 budget, and I so move. Move by Mr. Frizzle, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Summers, second by Ms. Price. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. 18-44, transferring and increasing appropriations in the various county budgets to fund year-end shortfalls. This is our year-end cleanup, and I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, seconded by Mr. Ballage. Any questions? Any questions? 
Previous roll call by Mr. Benefield and second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. And I have 18-45 authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents for the liquid tax program. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Frizzalone, second by Mr. Parker. Ms. Parker, I'm sorry. Any, and second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor say, signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, John Ferry, motion has carried. Our next finance committee meeting is scheduled for March 6th at 10 a.m. I'm going to lose my business. Thank you very much, Mike. Next up, our for Public Works and Transportation Committee, Mr. Gould, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Don. Good morning, fellow board members. First, I have Resolution 18-46, authorizing an agreement between the County of Will and Oxcart Oxcar Permit Systems for providing an online internet application for accepting and processing oversized and overweight truck permits under the Will County Division of Transportation Jurisdiction. I so move. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Moran. Any questions? Questions? Ms. O'Gall. Not a question, actually, just a comment. Uh, I wanted to say that I'm glad that we're doing something, something like this because I think that um, our truckers in the county have a difficult time going, knowing where to go and um, what they have to pay, who they have to pay. This will help, help ease that burden. Um, and in addition to that, I know that we are now going to be working with our um, East Rural County. We're starting on truck uh, routing, and I think that's really important because I can see the semis driving all over everywhere. Um, so that <coughs> it kind of all plays into our, our uh, community-friendly freight study. So one thing I want to say is as we move forward, I think it's important when we have initial meetings regarding these type of things that we are inclusive. So. For Eastern Will County, I know there's a meeting planned with, um, with the mayors. And I used to work for the road district out there. And I worked with one of the little township road district and we worked coll collaboratively on projects through Kids Home Township and Washington Township. And I know the conversation that is had and animosity kind of gets built when things are done separately. So I hope that when we look at this first meeting that we um, make a change and we invite not only the mayors but we also include our highway commissioners to be part of that first conversation so that everyone's in the room hearing the same thing. I know that they're having a township, uh, a township highwayman uh, commissioners meet monthly conversation and Jeff has been having with them. Um, but I just think it's important to do that because having worked as, uh, on a county, on a township highway, I know what I know how people how everyone feels sort of slighted, and I don't want that to to, to continue. And I hope Don, this has nothing to do with the particular Oxcar thing, but it's on that subject. So, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, no, but thank you. As you alluded to, uh, County Engineer Ronaldson does meet with the Township Highway Commissioners on a monthly basis, and I know that uh, Jeff is committed to continue to have these discussions, and he is. He has been very um, proactive in everything he's done with the Township Highway Commissioner, so they certainly will be included and to be a part of that. Thank you. Mr. Mr. You know, we all know that one of the challenges uh, is the last mile. It's actually when they get off the state system, it's actually when they get off the county system that uh, we have some challenges. And certainly I would agree that the township uh, Iowa Commissioner should be brought into the conversation. I did mention this at the Republican Caucus <coughs> this morning. Uh, I, I do have a lot of uh, confidence uh, in, in our county engineer. Uh, in some ways, he represents the Highway Commissioners. Uh, he, he works very closely with the Highway Commissioners, and of course, he, he manages their uh, uh, some of their tax, their motor fuel tax bonds, and so forth. So. There, there, there is that, that relationship there. And, and I do tend to agree with you, Judy, that, that when everybody sits at the table at the same time, if they just all sit and listen uh, 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 respectfully, you know, I think it, 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 you get a better, a better result. You know, one of, one of the things that Oxcart uh, uh, can do for the trucking industry is that as everyone comes together, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
the, the, the truckers can get the, the, the routing that they should go, that they're permitted to go down. And perhaps if other local uh, entities get on to like an ox cart, there'll be a one stop shop for everybody and there'll be a coordination of those truck routes because they'll be given the route. I still have concerns about uh, those that are not overweight and don't need to be permitted to make sure that they can uh, uh, follow the correct routes or the preferred trucking routes. But I think this certainly is uh, uh, another step forward in us implementing our uh, freight study, our community-friendly freight study. And I, uh, and I think we all need to put a little effort to say community-friendly because it's not only accommodating the industry, but it's mitigating the impacts the industry has on our, our community. So I do think this is uh, one of the first steps in implementation of, of moving our freight study forward. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Summers, did you have a comment? <coughs> uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm in total agreement with her. Um, this coming week, um, we have set up a round table out in Washington Township with the um, Highway Commissioner's, um, the Sheriff's Office, someone from IDOT's going to be there, and of course, Jeff is going to be there, it was very instrumental in um, getting someone down, out our way to sit down and talk, and it's basically on safety issues, which all plays into this. So I'm pretty excited <coughs> about that. Thank you, Jeff, and everyone else that's going to be involved. And um, I'm looking forward to sitting down and talking to these people about ideas that they have in the community. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that um, when I was on the highway department, I worked with Bruce Bailey, of course, Jeff was not in charge, and Bruce was, and it was always a really good working relationship between the uh, township and the highway department. Um, my point is basically the fact that Jeff was also, like I was, an invitee to the meeting on, on the upcoming 20, February 26th. With the, with the mayors. And I want to make sure that out in Eastern Will County we have more cohesiveness than currently exists. And I would like to see the highway commissioners be part of that conversation because it's better to have everybody up front and, get, and having, be feeling part of it versus um, being having a meeting later on because that is when things happen and negativity starts. So if, it, if there's going to be negativity, there's going to be even more negativity afterwards. I think I think the road commissioners, I've spoken with several of them, they're very interested in coming up with a truck route because they have semis everywhere. I see semis on my south road, which is a gravel road. My Lori sees it, her sister lives out in the country near me. As we see this and so we're all very interested in it and I think we need to do our kickoff meeting with this with everybody included. So I hope that uh, additional invitations will be sent to the highway commissioner. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other? There's a motion to the second. Motion to the second. Already. Previous poll by Ms. Summers, second by Mr. Markham. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion has carried. Resolution 1847, amending Will County Division of Transportation Oversized Overweight Truck Permit Procedures. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Melatello. Any questions? Any questions? <coughs> Previous vote by Ms. Dollinger, second by Mr. Ballage. All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Resolution 1848, temporary 12 month amendment to the ordinance amending Bull County Division of Transportation Oversized Overweight Truck Permit Procedures. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tuminello. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Fritz, second by Ms. O'Gala. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, <coughs> Resolution 1849, confirming an award of contract to preform traffic <coughs> control systems, led on January 17, 2018, for county board striping, all county board districts. I move for approval. By Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Parker. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Rice, second by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 motion is carried. Resolution 1850, 
Improvement by the county under the Illinois Highway Code for the countywide striping, all county board districts using MFT funds. I move for approval. Move by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? And second. Any questions? Any questions? Previous vote by Ms. Warren Perry and, and second by Mr. Moran. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. 1851, improvement by the county under the Illinois Highway Code for 95th Street at its intersection with Plainfield, Nicholas Road, <coughs> County Board District 11, using county motor fuel tax funds. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Mayor. Any question? Any question? Previous vote by Ms. Arch, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Resolution 1852, a supplemental resolution for improvement by the county under the Illinois Highway Code for Creek Money Road from Old Money Road to Route 1 using additional motor fuel tax funds, County Board District 1. I move for approval. Move by Mr. Cooke and Gould, second by Ms. Summer. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. O'Gala, second by Mr. Weigel. All in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion has carried. Resolution 1853, rescinding resolution 16-206 and authorizing approval of an IDOT county joint agreement for improvements on Weber Road from 135th Street to Normantown Road, County Board Districts 3 and 13. I move for approval. Move by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Moran. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Harris, second by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. In resolution 1854, authorizing approval of the expenditure of county motor fuel tax funds, $18 million, for the improvements on Weber Road from 135th Street to Normantown Road, County Board Districts 3 and 13. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Moran. Any, any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Rice, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor say it. Signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. I'd like, the, like to uh, thank the committee for all their work this month. And um, that last resolution certainly uh, will begin a, a long but needed process. Thank you, Don. Our next meeting is March the 6th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, our Judicial Committee, Mr. Benefield, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Aaron, fellow board members. I just wanted to say that we're having very informative meetings at the, uh, at the Judicial Committee, and I would encourage you guys to come on out and get a chance. Uh, we just haven't had items to present to the board for voting on, uh, but I just wanted to say, hey, come on out, hear about the judicial, the judiciary. Uh, it's very informative. We're learning a lot. And uh, our next mini meeting is scheduled for uh, March 6th at 9 a.m. And uh, we hope to see some of you out there. Thank you very much, Aaron. Next up, Public Health and Safety Committee, Ms. O'Gall, Sheriff. Good morning, Executive Fellow Board members. Good morning, Judy. I just have a couple items to be placed on. I have a report to be placed on file. It is the uh, Will County Regional Office of Education quarterly report from October 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2017, submitted by Dr. Sean Walsh, who is our Regional Superintendent of Schools, and I support that. Moved by Ms. O'Gall, second by Mr. Valley. You're all in favor, you signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, no way. The motion is carried. That's all the actions I have. But I do want to make everyone aware of um, an upcoming seminar that's being put on by um, Congressman Bill Foster. It's combating the heroin epidemic annual review. Everyone is invited to a discussion on the status of the fight against heroin abuse in the 11th Congressional District. This meeting will be held Friday, February 23rd from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. It's going to be held at the Will County Health Center the community room, which is on the lower level. That address for the community health, community county health center is 1106 Neal Avenue in Joliet. This uh, this <coughs> review is free and open to the public, and it's noted that opioid addiction remains a major challenge for our community. Recently, we've seen the introduction of heroin laced with 
drugs like fentanyl, creating a substance, a substance hundreds of times more potent and addictive than the original. Congressman Bill Foster is bringing together governmental and non-profit leaders for discussion of local efforts and accomplishments for curbing the heroin epidemic. For more information and to register, you're uh, invited to visit foster.house.gov backslash heroin. So if you are interested in this issue, I believe many people are going to want to attend this meeting. And then lastly, I have uh, I noticed that uh, the Will County Board is again putting together a group for the Relay for Life. So that is coming up on June 2nd. It's from noon midnight, I'm sorry, noon to midnight. And uh, we have two co-chairs. So we have Gloria Dollinger and Tyler Markham. There's more details to come, but um, the County Board's been doing this for quite a while, and I, I think it's a really great effort to see everybody work together. My next, the next Public Health and Safety Committee meeting is scheduled for Thursday, March 1st at 9 a.m. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Next up is our Legislative and Policy Committee, Ms. Hart, Chairperson. Thank you, Executive. Uh, we have 18-55, which is establishing the 2018 Federal Legislative Agenda and Priorities, and I so move. Moved by Ms. Hart, seconded by Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Any discussion? Discussion? Previous vote, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, I just want to, uh, at this time, thank the uh, committee for all the hard work that they did on this federal agenda. I mean, putting this kind of uh, activity together and, and being able to communicate succinctly to our federal uh, lobbyists and our representatives in Washington is an extremely important uh, thing to have done. And uh, I want to thank our chairman and the, her committee for all their hard work on this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Motion by Ms. Dollinger, second by Ms. Rice. Previous roll call. All in favor say yes. Say, favor say aye. 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 Trade motion has carried. Thank you, Chuck, for bringing that up because there is a lot more work than uh, meets the eye. And Nick, thank you. I mean, the, the amount of calls <coughs> that we had with DC, with Brent and, and Reagan, and all of us and going through and having to amend and, and come back, I don't know if everyone realizes the, the amount of effort. So I appreciate it more than you know. Uh, we have our next legislative and policy committee meeting will be scheduled for March 13th, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Mr. Tuminell, will you have a comment? Nope. Oh. Just getting ready for my committee. Oh. Over and under before the Okay. Ready and ready and to go. And the next committee is Capital Improvements Committee. Mr. Tuminello. Tuminello. Chairman. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Uh, while there is nothing to, re uh, to vote on today for the Capital Improvements Committee, I did want to share with you an update on the buildings. Well, we have quite a bit going on, and I'd like to personally thank everyone on the Capital Improvements Committee members that have worked so diligently. We meet now twice a month, uh, many times above and beyond uh, those two meetings. We have to communicate with our members. Uh, and moving forward in an effort to be a little more transparent because of the fact that our committee has the ability to approve so much that never even comes out to, to the board level uh, regarding bills, some of the updates, some of the decisions that we make. Uh, every month from moving forward, there's going to be some information in your packet. There will be a report updating the entire board just so they can get on the same page. A lot of people have, uh, have questions about the capital improvements. They see the county spending quite a bit of money building a lot of nice facilities. And we want to make sure that every county board member has the ability to answer the same questions uh, that the committee members are able to answer. So with regard to the public safety complex, and as I said, I'll only read this once, and then moving forward, it'll be in the, in the packet. With regard to the public safety complex, the, the main building is substantially completed as of November. The punch list on the main building is about 99% complete. We have a couple items that are left open, such as signage, controls, and hardware. The new radio tower is operational. We have a couple of open items there with a complete demo and site restoration of the old tower. 
The equipment storage building is 75% complete. It's under roof, interior work, and MEPs are ongoing. The new impound lot is 100% complete. Impounded vehicles on the new secured lot are, are there right now. Uh, the abatement, demolition, and site restoration of the building on the, on the old site uh, begins on 217, which is in two days. Uh, warranty compliance and facility maintenance planning is underway, and that's regarding the safety complex. With regard to the courthouse, the trade contract, contract awards for all bid packages 1, 2, and 3 have been complete and signed off by the committee. The bid opening date for bid package 4, which will uh, involve 15 finished trades, will be on uh, February 15th. The utility relocation work is ongoing. Uh, we have discussed this in committee extensively with AT&T, ComEd, NICOR. Uh, I'm happy to announce that all of that is on schedule. Project excavation and uh, First Midwest building, uh, building demolition is underway and on schedule. The concrete footings and foundation are to start on February 26th. So if you want to see the footings and foundation work on the new courthouse, that's going to be starting in the next couple weeks. And we have resolved our uh, resolve, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is. Resolved the issue uh, with our city of Joliet with the street lighting requirements. Uh, we, we worked through all of that uh, in the previous month. With regard to the health department, the programming is completed. We have two levels totaling about 80,000 square foot uh, is what they've suggested. Uh, the committee is now going back to pair that down to make sure that it fits uh, within our budget. Uh, one thing that you may or may not have read about is the fact that the committee has also selected the site of the future uh, Will County Health Department. <coughs> the new facility will be built at the current location. Uh, we went through some diligent uh, review on that and that was what the committee decided. Uh, <coughs> Capital Improvements Committee will finalize the decision on the project delivery method on how we're going to build it right. and who's going to design it uh, in the upcoming meetings. The, with regard to the new animal facil control, uh, facility, control facility, a white company was selected by, for design by the Capital Improvements Committee. Uh, the total project cost budget is established at about $3 million, of which we have all of it in a bank account, uh, which is received from uh, user fees from the animal control. So none of this money will come out of any of the corporate funds of the county. Uh, it will be a new approximately 7,000 square foot gross uh, square foot building to be located just south of the Will County Department of Transportation on Cherry Hill Road. <clears throat> Design completion and construction documents are due approximately May 14th and then we'll be, uh, begin uh, building that building. So I just wanted to give everybody an update on what the committee's been working on. Moving forward, you're going to have this in the packet and you'll be able to review it and understand and know what the committee's been working on. That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, Ray, I, I, I'm asking you to ask a little clarification. When you say the health department programming is complete, uh, all the programming potentials and possibilities have been presented. It doesn't mean that the necessarily the programming is completed. For example, in that building they show storage. Well, we may not want to include that, pro that storage in that building. It becomes pretty expensive for the storage. So I just want to get some clarification sure. on that. The programming has not been completed. All po potential possibilities have been completed. So, so the, program sure. had, the program had been completed based on what the input um, was from the health department and they came back. Now, what our job is now is to take that programming and what their, their, their kind of wish list, just like we did with DLR at the sheriff's station, uh, years ago when they came back with this monster facility it was going to be twice the cost then it was that the committee uh, came back we pared it down to what the needs and what the wants were we are now going to do the same thing with the health department we're going to take the program that, that they presented to us we're going to take it down to what the needs of the of the health department are going to be and then we'll we'll present uh, a final plan on, on the actual square footage that meets and fits the budget that's set by the finance uh, that, that was maybe my next point yeah. and that is that we have not established a budget for the uh, health department you know almost all our projects are as budget driven doesn't mean that we don't adjust the budget as we go along it's uh, including things that make sense uh, 
And I do believe that the uh, Finance Committee will take it up next month to help establish a budget. Uh, you know, with, with the program projected so far, and, and it's pretty typical, it's twice what we thought our budget would be. Sure. So, uh, so there's work to be done, is I guess what I'm saying. I don't want people getting the impression all the programming's been done and we're moving forward. Uh, uh, this project, like all our projects, will be budget driven and what we can, uh, what resources we can put forward. Because if we, uh, if we just take what's been done so far, it would probably require an additional bond issue. I think give you some. So there's some work to be done. But we, we feel very confident as a committee that we will be able to drill down uh, on a much tighter budget and make sure that it's within the budget that the finance department has given us. We've gone through this on other projects. This is pretty typical. You come in, you know, you throw everything against the wall of what you expect and what you'd like in the department, and then you come back and you look at the realities of it. So I, I believe moving forward the, the committee will stay on budget, on task, and, and deliver the project within the scope of what, what we're given. Commissioner Weigel. I was sort of brought to my attention by a member of the community that uh, wondered if the committee had looked at Old Silver Cross Hospital as a possible site for the uh, health department. Just uh, throw that out. Yes, the, the current site uh, for the Silver Cross Hospital was not considered. Uh, I met with Mr. Jurgens, I met with some of the individuals from the uh, Silver Cross at the State of the Village um, just a couple days ago in, in New Lenox. And they had uh, submitted some interest in it. I tried turning it back on, it won't go back on. Okay. So I tried getting the uh, the information from Mr. Jurgens. He has since then supplied it. I have been in communications with uh, Ms. Holnick regarding that site. Uh, as we learned in committee, the the our site is unique. Our, our health department is, is not unique, but but it is to the sense that that it's like a co-op with the clinic. So it's not set up like 95% of the other ones across the country. Uh, in, in counties, it's, it's set up as a cooperative with the clinic. So to move the health department away from the clinic is really not conducive to the operations and, and to the long-term you know, goal of delivering the, the product. So we would have to either, if we went down that path, we would have to move the entire clinic and the health department or just stay exactly where we're at. So that's why they, we've determined as a committee to, to stay where we're at. I have submitted uh, in the last couple of days to Ms. Olnick the information regarding uh, Silver Cross and her and I will lead on it. But as of right now, uh, we don't have any intention to move to that location. First of all, Harry, you mentioned uh, if you want to watch the footings in, uh, go in or if you want to watch the demo, you certainly can go there. But you might remind everybody that we do have a website. You can watch 24-7, see the cars live moving around, so you'll be able to see the demo, see the building come up out of the ground. So if you go to that website, and this is a, this is a good site to tell your constituents to take a look at. Because even more so than what we did in the Sheriff's Department, this is live streaming. So they see everything going on as it's happening. So it'll be very interesting, especially to watch uh, the demo of uh, the Venice Bay very good if you hit the play button because when you first look at it, right. it's just so it's like it's not moving. It's a very clear picture. Yeah, it's very clear. It's like very clear. Right there. Yeah. Thank you. Good train here. Just a quick question. For my my uh, where is that at? Is it on the Hudson page? You can link to it through Capital. Yeah, the and then you board. click on capital yeah. projects. You have to go to capital. Yeah, you capital projects. Capital projects, and then you just pull it up. I think you can go to Mr. Mr. Brooks. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Brooks, do you have a comment? Yes. Um, and my comment is a little different uh, than what's been already said. Uh, Ray, I want to bring up a point that uh, Speaker Muse has mentioned in our executive uh, committee meeting. 
um, two words that were music to my ears, and that was minority hiring. And we're, our initiative was being proactive with some projects that are coming up. And I want to thank you for that, sir. But uh, my question to you today, Ray, is this. Uh, as far as minority hiring is concerned, reactively, is there anything that can be done or can there be discussions now that there are demolitions going on? Those things are already in progress. Well, the, the, the bid packages that encompass that are already obviously bid Correct. because they're working on the project. But we've only been through three bid packages. Bid packages four start. And I thought we did a, a very extensive job, and I thought we did a very good job of uh, the outreach programs that we did to try to try to encompass everybody in Will County. Uh, we did reach out uh, tremendously. I know uh, Ms. Winfrey and yourself did a great job trying to reach out to the minority groups and get them to communicate with Gilbane and at our outreach programs. I thought they did a good job. But outside of you know continuing to educate them and to open the door and to make sure that they know of the project and the bid dates, I think we've done a pretty good job. I'm not sure there's much more that we could do as a county to, to include anybody else. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, Mr. Brooks, uh, you know, there, there's more than one phase of, of uh, <coughs> reaching out, not only to smaller contractors, but certainly the workforce. So many of these bid packages are fairly large, and they're not going to be for uh, smaller companies, but they do hire uh, subcontractors, uh, and they do, of course, hire folks. And under our documents, they will have to do us some additional reach out. So the folks that are successful in getting these uh, uh, contracts, these good packages, will do an, an additional outreach. So, uh, uh, so there's more to be done. Uh, so I, I, you know, we certainly we want to hire as many folks in Will County and give as many Will County-based uh, businesses opportunity. Uh, so that there'll be so there'll be some additional work. All right. Thank you. And Gil Bain, just to piggyback on that, Gil Bain does have a website out there if anyone's interested. If you're a minority contractor, a female contractor, if you're uh, just a small business owner, if you want to piggyback and join up and team up with other larger companies on certain big packages, you can go to outreach.gilbaneco.com and it will actually allow you to piggyback and register for a portion of the job so you would have the ability uh, to combine the binding requirements with other companies so that you're not you know, left out in the dark because you don't have the binding capability. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moran. I think it's worth noting that Google's uh, subcontract is demolition of First Midwest Bank owner to a woman owned disadvantaged business. Anything else? I only think you fired the questions at me. <laughs> well, you were ready. <laughs> I feel like I live in sleep here. I might as well be ready. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next up, uh, Executive Committee, Mr. Mustard, Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Mr. Mustard, County Board. Uh, my first item today is to replace on file the Will County CED annual report, and I'll move to place it on file. Moved by Mr. Mustard, second by Mr. Mayor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. I see 1856 authorizing contribution to United Way, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Munoz, to second by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Summers, uh, second by Mr. Ferry. All in favor, favor six, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion has carried. Next, I have 1857 amending the policy prohibiting sexual. Harassment, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Gould, <laughs> second by Ms. Parker. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion has carried. Next, I have 1858, awarding bid for electronic recycling collection, one day events, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Ms. Grenier. Any questions? Any questions? 
Previous roll by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. Collinger. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 1859, authorized an intergovernmental agreement with Franklin Township for electronic recycling. I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mistress, second by Ms. Hart. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Tuman Allen, second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. Authorized an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Naperville for the operation of household hazardous waste collection facility. And I will move for approval by Mr. Mistress, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? <coughs> Previous roll by motion by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. Rainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. 1861, authorizing the sheriff seize vehicles and uh, authorizing a uh, surplus and authorizing disposal. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Ms. Summers. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Singer, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 1862, declaring various equipment surplus and authorizing disposal. I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Mr. Markham. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 1863, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the PACE for continuation of the service provided for the mobility management project. And I will move for approval by Mr. Musta, second by Ms. Summers. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll from by Mr. Markham, second by Mr. Moran. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. 1864. Replacing hires for the county executive, the Sunny Hill Nursing Home maintenance worker, and I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mister, second by Mr. Ferry. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Molotello, second by Ms. Parker. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. Uh, the next executive committee meeting will be March 1st at 10 a.m. at the office complex here uh, and next i have the appointments of the county executive and i will move for approval moved by mr mistress second by mr brooks anyone any got, uh, questions any questions previous roll by mr tumanel second by miss o'dowell all in favor signify to say an aye. aye contrary motion has carried uh, that concludes uh, my report. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Anyone here to wish to speak before the board and properly comment? We have no, nobody signed up, but if anyone here to speak on behalf before the board, anyone to speak? <laughs> Comments by county board members. Any county, county, county board members got any comments? Comments, announcements by, by the majority leader, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Uh, I've been told I need to be short because I'm bad on the over and over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first off, I want to uh, all our thoughts and prayers out to the families and folks out in Florida. Uh, this is such a travesty that uh, um, we just need to make sure that our kids stay safe in our schools and. Um, so thoughts and prayers out to their family and friends. Um, also, you know, we just updated our uh, policy for human resources on and included sexual harassment. You know, a lot of things have been in the news lately and as a father of four daughters um, and daughters or guys, I think it's important that uh, nobody be harassed sexually or any other one. And so uh, I'm glad that we continue to, to uh, firm up our policies. Um, and then, last but not least, we've had a lot of conversations today about partnerships. You know, from everything that with the, Bob Schillstrom was talking about and the partnerships with the highways, uh, the Joliet Township providing uh, $150,000 because of the need and, and, and epidemic that we have with the opioids, um, to, as you take a listen to the um, votes that were had today, 
there are majority votes across the aisle, both ways. And so partnerships happen in a lot of different ways, and without having these kind of partnerships, we just can't get stuff done. So thank you both sides of the aisle here for all the hard work that you did this month. And um, I think we got spring training coming up soon, didn't I hear, Larry? Eight targets. Started. Yeah. And, and the Cubs got a new pitcher? The White Sox is already the White Sox. Is already the White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I can't wait to the Crosstown Classics. I think we should get tickets and everybody go. So uh, with that, uh, everybody have a wonderful uh, weekend. And um, take care. Thank you. Next up, our minority leader, Mr. Brooks. I am a preacher, so I know how to keep it short. <laughs> yeah, I'm asked for that every Sunday. <laughs> I just want to echo my colleague across the aisle, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, last I heard on the uh, television this morning, 17 students perished in the school in Florida. So certainly we want to keep that state of Florida in our prayers. Chicago officer Bauer lost his life in the line of duty on this week. And the whole state of Illinois, we're mourning for uh, Officer Bauer in Chicago. And also, certainly want to thank the Joliet Township for the check for 150000 And I said earlier, since I'm a minister, the church get 10% tithe on that. <laughs> so, but I want to thank you for that. And then lastly, uh, Gretchen, I appreciate that prayer. And just want to remind you that whenever you do your prayer, they owe you a handshake. So you, Nancy owes you a handshake before you leave. <laughs> all right? Thank you very much. God bless you all. That's your enough. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, no, no, I have to be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'll wait until you let me. Next up, our um, county board speaker, Mr. Mistress. Uh, you know, when you, when you go last in these comments, you know, as you wind up so do some repetition. Uh, but I, too, would like to thank everyone for all our hard work all month. Uh, I, I would also like to thank Julia Township for their contribution uh, uh, to our uh, our program here that I think is is, is getting, uh, certainly I think, I believe is getting some good results uh, uh, and we'll keep at it. So I'd like to thank Frank and Township, and as you all know, I'm a Township kind of person, so you know, they're real contributors to the local, I think, uh, flavor of government. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to, uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, mention was uh, Commander Bauer. I realized that you know it's a Chicago policeman, but it made me think about all policemen and all law enforcement. And of course, we deal with the sheriff's department and with the law enforcement and corrections. We're going through budgets and there's a lot of push and pull and uh, you know there's always a big wish list you know we get that way we have to kind of weed through it but we sometimes I think we should never forget the job they do uh, and it is a job that I don't think I want to do and probably most people do not and uh, uh, so when they say go up to a policeman and thank <coughs> Uh, we're with you. By the way, I have signs to say I support I support uh, law enforcement and police. If you want them, let me know. I'll get you one in your yard. So uh, I, I would like to say to all law enforcement, whether it's uh, all through Will County, all through the state of Illinois, uh, you, may, you may not always hear it. And generally, when you come in contact with people, it's not always a pleasant uh, uh, situation, but uh, we all do appreciate the job you do. So thank you. Uh, spring training has started. I can't wait to watch those young guys uh, 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 from the White Sox come up. I don't want them to be the aging Cubs. But, <laughs> 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 so, but, uh, but uh, uh, everyone here. And uh, actually, spring training, I'm actually really waiting for spring. I, uh, if you get the train, I'd like some spring. So uh, thanks everyone and that concludes my comments. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mistress. Uh, following Mr. Mr. Mistress' lines, I got a message here handed to me from uh, Mike McLarini that Governor Bruce Browner that all persons or entities 
um, that are covered by the Illinois Flag to Study Act to, to fly the flags at half staff in honor of Chicago Police Commander Paul Bauer. From Thursday morning, um, sunrise to sunset on Saturday, on um, February 17th. So, and so, and also I would like to, I would like personally like to thank our highway workers. Uh, they have done a yeoman job uh, yes. Yes. Uh, on the, the number of compliments that I have personally received at the county roads, uh, <coughs> open and uh, salted and, and drivable. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so Jeff passed that on to, to the group and, and also our maintenance workers around the buildings that the sidewalks are and parking lots are salted and sidewalks are uh, shoveled and then cleaned. So uh, job well done. We, uh, we do have to go into executive session today for the issue of um, the negotiations, um, the, the negotiations, labor negotiations. So, uh, after we'll take a five, a five minute break and, uh, and uh, uh, we need a motion to go in. Uh, uh, move to go to second. Move, uh, move to second. Um,